Hey you, Meowkaiser are coming at you today with a very different kind of video. I, there was, I've been having a lot of trouble with Twitch lately and it hasn't actually been saving my VODs as well as I've been dropping frames just because of people using the internet around here. So I figured I'd give you something a little bit different. I wanted to talk a lot about some of the decisions I make in game, why I do it, uh, and just a lot of different concepts. First I want to talk about the buffs we saw to hand, most notably to two weapons. Right? So we got Brazil Gauntlet, which got a hand buff from 48 stat attack to 46, 45 to 46, and 1 inch punch from 44 to 45. And as I was talking about this, I was saying that these are huge buffs, most notably because Brazil Gauntlet now being at 46 makes it an accessible uh, hand weapon that is actually comparable to most early game rushes that you see out of other uh, classes. You see 46 stat attack on Blade, you see 46 stat attack on Stab, well kind of, a lot of people rush Cosmic Vidant and Lance of Poseidon making Stab slightly weaker, but that's, as I said, slightly. Uh, Blunt is actually weaker in this case, which is actually really, really strange. Blunt didn't used to be weaker in his purple rush, so to be fair, they used to just rush blue weapons and then pray to RNG so that they can get a 48 stat attack weapon. That was the thing they used to do. Uh, throw is actually weaker in general, you don't, unless they're going for, uh, what are they called? Bone crushers. Gun is always strong because everyone just rushes this stupid item. And then for bow, uh, you see a lot of Huacha, but in general people go for Twin Bubblista, so it's a little bit weaker there. But the point is that Hand all of a sudden finds itself in a situation where it has comparable stat attack to everything else, and that begs the question, okay, why don't we have a D plus hand character yet? Well, the answer is a little bit simple. First off, we have Hyunwoo. Hyunwoo is a balancing nightmare, right? When you have a character that can gain experience for free, you have to make sure that he's in a position where he's either really weak or he's not overwhelming, right? Because uh, one of the things that I've been noticing as a trend is that we've been getting these characters that get buffed to D+, right? They get buffed to D+, and they either get like, they're okay, or they're too good. And in the case where they were too good, we have Bernice, right? And his stat attack got nerfed from like around 54, I believe? I don't remember the exact number, but it went all the way down to 48, right? So, late game Bernice has only two more stat attack than Hyunwoo. That's huge. That means Hyunwoo's late game is actually comparable to Bernice's late game, and Hyunwoo gets there faster. Uh, I did the calculations, so D plus gets about six free hits when they start in comparison to D characters. For Hyunwoo to make up that difference, right, he has to get like 15 dogfights in, which over the course of the game you're going to get a lot of dogfights in. You get a lot more than that. I have to count the exact number, but I. On average, most games where you win, you get about anywhere between 80 to 120 hits. Yes, I've counted. No, no, no. It's not 80 to 120. It's a little bit more than that. Uh, the count actually comes from Adela, right? Because I've tried her orange weapon rush. And around 40 attacks is when your purple weapon defects. So once I get 40, this is part of the reason why you need to keep using your check if you want to do orange rush, but that's another meme. So in any case, part of the reason why hands hasn't gotten D plus yet is that they can make up for the six attack different difference by unequipping their weapons, barehanding an animal, and getting like four or five extra hits by doing that. And also on top of that, hand just has faster weapons in general, right? Like if you go through hands, uh. If you get any RNG item, right? All you need is steel. You make quick gauntlet. You make this. You got Phoenix Arm Tattoo. Or if you weren't able to do that and got leather per se, right? You know, that's really quick. Frost Petal Hand. I've actually did this in one video. You almost never see this, but you know, the point is you have the option. Imperial Silk Gloves is also really fast. Brazil, oh, not Brazil Gauntlet. That's actually a little bit slower, but that's not an RNG item. And then Power Fist is also really fast, right? That's some of the fastest RNG items. The downside is that when we get Holy Blood, if we want to make weapon, we have to make Chimera's Cry. We have no other choice. Uh, also, Blood Wing Knuckle is super fast. Uh, Shatter, Sh Shatter Shell Gauntlet is super fast, although it's got buff recently. It basically has five skill damage on every attack. 
is one way you can think of it. And of course, Fenrir's Claw is also super fast. This is just three items. You just need the Claw, Iron Ore, and Mithril, and you're good. Right? <laughs> so another thing I want to talk about is I actually praise uh, this one Boots, Bio Booster, as being the best purple item in the game. I mean, well, best purple boots in the game, right? And 3% life steal doesn't seem like much, right? But when you compare it to everything else, Battle Boots has uh, minus 3% uh, damage taken by ranged weapons. Only ranged weapons. And then Maverick Runner has same armor. Battle Boots has same armor. Killer Heals is just quick, right? But so is Bio Boosters, right? Bio Boosters is pretty quick. And then Mithril Boots requires RNG. EOD Boots, uh, this... The ability is sometimes relevant, very rarely. The extra armor is actually not that much, and I'll go into details later how that calculation goes, because I actually have the damage differential between 10 armor, more or less, right? At different stages of the game. And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, blade Boots is the only exception. You would actually want to build Blade Boots over Bio Boosters if you have the opportunity to, if you're playing a crit character. Because plus 7% crit damage is huge on characters that can reliably get crits. It's also huge if you get Die of Destiny, so this actually becomes viable if you build Die of Destiny, and then you're just like, oh, I can actually just build Blade Boots. But that those games are few and far between. So... The best way to show how Bio Booster's, like, 5 armor difference doesn't actually make a different, big difference is when you compare Tuxedo versus Butler Suit, right? So... When I have the option between Tuxedo and Butler Suit, I actually always build Tuxedo. And while this is largely viewed as a personal choice, right? Uh, the minus 50% chance, with a 50% chance that the next attack taken to 50 if it exceeds 50, is actually a huge passive, right? And here's how the math works. So if you come into, not collection, index, and you go to the guide, if we go and look for encounters in combat, you can actually see the damage formula here, right? So it's the total attack power times 100 divided by your enemy's armor plus 100. So as you can see, attack skills much better than defense, right? So for example, let's just say we had 45 armor because that's the armor that Tuxedo has, right? And let's just say that our opponent has 100 attack. So when you go through the math, the, uh, it's 10,000 divided by 145, which is 68.96. So it, the game will register that as an attack of 69 versus 155, right? Which will be 10,000 divided by 155, which is 64.52. The game of, uh, associates that as 65. It, the game rounds into a full number, right? So that is a four damage differential. Now, let's just assume that we had 100 versus 110 armor, right? Let's just to give, no, 200 versus 210, just for late game sake, right? So at 200 armor, you would have you would take 33.33 damage from it, which is about like 33, right? And then versus, uh, oh wait, no, it's 32.25. I actually mixed up these numbers. No, no, I did get these numbers. So at 200 armor, you take 33.33, and then at 210 armor, you take 32.25. That's only a one damage differential. So late game, the di the armor difference doesn't make much of a difference at all and every time you're passive for tuxedo procs you save 20 hp maybe even more and it could actually potentially just straight up win you the game it's the reason why i always build tuxedo when i am giving the choice you can also so see how the i just pressed the wrong thing again how armor falls off in the late game so if we take a look at guardian suit right and so Usually, Guardian Suit has, like, what, about 60 more armor than most purples, right? Uh, I guess 65. But I did the calculation for 60, right? So 300, you would, at uh, 200 armor, you would take 33.33 damage. At 260, right, you would take 27.77. The damage differential is just 5, right? So when you, you have to go through all this effort, you know, two steals, right? just to build this thing. This thing is almost never worth it. You actually save, uh, I forgot about the damage modifier, so you actually just save an additional one health, so you save six health per hit, right? <laughs> this does not add up at all in comparison to kill pressure, where you could just easily build like a 57 stat attack weapon, you could build basically anything else, really. All the orange weapons give you kill pressure, and kill pressure is 
way better than armor because it makes the health that your opponent is carrying much weaker. Now, if you were in a lobby where it was like last three areas and there's like six people still alive, then yeah, Guardian Suit becomes more valuable, but those situations are few and far between. Usually a lot of people start dying before the last three areas. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, I also want to talk about the concept of effective health, right? So I see a lot of people you know, complain that they're running out of food and stuff like that, and they don't understand the whole armor rushing mentality, right? So if you want to have a lot of mastery late into the game, right, you want to be fighting a lot early, but in order to fight a lot early, you have to have food early, right? So, you know, you'll build your food, but this food actually isn't worth a lot early if you only have, you know, 45 armor, right? With 45 armor, if you take uh, 100 attack, you know, that's 69 damage, but if you had 200 armor in instead of 45 just for just crazy differences you'd only take 33 from that 100 attack mind you most people have a lot less attack that early in the game so you could easily be taking like 10 hp 8 hp if you armor rush and thus you can get more hits in because you're don't really care too much about the damage they're dealing and your healing is actually worth a lot more so that's part of the reason why armor is so good if you've been playing this game for a while you already know this uh he i did talk about how hyunwoo is getting hit in buffs uh consistent versus inconsistent damage so inconsistent damage in this game is actually more valuable than consistent damage right because because it's hard to play around so like for example kiara has very consistent damage you always know how much damage you're going to take with the exception of like whenever she's going to judgment you right so it's really easy to play around her damage Rosali, on the other hand he hits you for 170 percent damage on occasion with his clutch hitter right or just whenever he gets a crit so what you end up seeing a lot of times is people running away from Rosalio early because they're afraid of getting crit out of the game. Or you see this against Aya for the same reason. Same thing with Alex. Getting bursted out of the game is scary and good players have to respect that. So what ends up happening is like people will be like winning a trade against you, right? But they have to leave early just because of your kill pressure with your inconsistent damage. This is part of the reason that makes uh, Die of Destiny better than a lot of accessories, right? So we go to the accessories. Die of Destiny is probably one of the best blue accessories in the game, with Uchiwa probably being the second best blue accessory. Uchiwa ha is really good early because of the minus five damage taken when attacked. Usually blue only gets minus two, right? I, I really wish they made this more clear because like a lot of new players aren't actually aware that this reduces even more damage. They used to make this super clear, but that was AB's decision, I have no idea why. So in general, Uchiwa is the best blue accessory to rush early. Die of Destiny actually scales really well into late game, giving a lot of uh, kill pressure, even though it does less crit damage. So what I find myself doing is Die of Destiny actually replaces Schrodinger's Box, it replaces uh, Moonlight Pendants. It sometimes replaces this. I say sometimes, it's really just a matter of if I have second weapon or not. But uh, Kundala just generally beats everything late game. A lot of people hate Kundala, I have no idea why. Kundala used to be really bad when Veritas Lux Mia was really good, but now that this got nerfed, Kundala is now the best accessory. Uh, Moonline Pendants and... where is it? Moonstone is actually both better than Uchiwa. So I see a lot of people missing on this. Like, the only time you would want to go Uchiwa over Mo Moonstone late game is if you don't have a lot of food and you just want to survive. Which is fair. For the most part, the other accessories though, like the Schrodinger's Box. Schrodinger's Box is like crazy good early. It's arguable that it could actually be stronger than Uchiwa early. The only issue is that Schrodinger's Box has a weird build. Although, there's a couple routes that make this easy, like Lighthouse, Archery Range, uh, Pond makes that pretty easy if you're on hand. But yeah, that's how I make my decisions when it comes to my armor. And usually you won't be making these decisions unless you see a corpse, right? So this is just something to keep in mind and will probably help you win like one more game out of 100, right? It could matter. It might not. You never know. Oh, and of course, Pirate Flag, you only build this on Sylvia. Don't build this on anyone else. <laughs> I That pretty much explains itself. Uh, another mistake that I see a lot of new players make is they make a ton of health healing eyes, right? And you know, that's fine and dandy, but they don't make stamina. And... When you exhaust, for every point of stamina that you exhaust, you take two damage, right? So you could think of every stamina item healing you for 
two health for every stamina it restores, right? So hot honey water gives is 168 stamina. So if we multiply that by four, I actually didn't calculate this before the video. So 168 times four. So this is a 672 healing, right? And the game does this on knows this, and they do this on purpose. Every time you rest, you get four stamina back. Every time you heal, you only get two health back. <laughs> so it's actually very comparable, right? So it's actually really important to make sure to keep up your stamina. It's also part of the reason why Accelerate is better than uh, Bread Seeking. So if we take a look at Bread Seeking, let me see if it'll actually let me take a good look at it. Oh, it doesn't. So the in-game cooldown is like five minutes for this thing, right? And you only get 20 health unless you use this with like Garlic, which gives you 105 health, or if you use it with uh, Soju, it gives you 80 health, right? Accelerate, on the other hand, saves you a lot of stamina and a lot of health, right? So Accelerate activates for 15 seconds, I believe. And I can get about three searches off every five seconds, right? So if I search an area nine times, right, I save 18 stamina. 18 stamina is 36 health every time I activate Accelerate. And I will be able to activate Accelerate every single time. And every time I move an area, I save four stamina. Every time I move an area, I save eight health. So ultimately, Accelerate, it just, mathematically speaking, is just a lot better than Bread Seeking. And it even has a lower cooldown. So there's almost no reason to ever go Bread Seeking. A lot of people you see going Bread Seeking are intentionally making the game harder for themselves. Don't copy them. <laughs> Uh, and then of course you could go counterattack. Honestly, counterattack versus accelerate is a matter of preference. I prefer accelerate because my stamina management sucks. Oh, and also ammo supply versus uh, ammo supply and arrow supply. So a lot of people I see playing gun, you know, they don't put, bring ammo supply. Same thing with air with bow, they don't bring arrow supply. I actually immediately write you off as not a threat in the lobby, right? Ammo supply and arrow supply have been known to give those characters better win rates, right? So, in the case of ammo supply, if we take a look through the index, uh, it gives you access to some of the best guns in the game. If you don't have ammo supply, you have to build Polaris, which is incredibly hard because you need, you know, a bunch of electronic parts. You need to make a cell phone. If you've ever tried to make a cell phone, that's a pain in the butt to try to make. This only gives you 48 stat attack. Or you make uh, Electron Blaster into Plasma Rifle, which is a 46 stat attack gun. And if you're playing gun, you're only going for 46 stat attack, you feel really bad, right? Versus this stupid gun, which is super quick to make, but the downside is that it has only eight shots. With ammo supply, you completely overwrite this downside, and you just have a 50 stat attack weapon for the entire game. Uh, gun and bow have 1% defect rates, which is half the defect rate of melee weapons. I find on average that when you play melee weapons, you'll defect at around 40 to 50 hits with the weapon after the grace period, right? With gun, however, you can easily find yourself you know, getting 90 to 100 attacks off with on um, purple weapon after the grace period. If you don't know what I'm talking about, grace period, the game has it hard coded into the game that uh, in the first 15 attacks you make with a newly crafted weapon, it cannot defect. That's just to prevent some random RNG, like, you know, you go and you hit somebody and then you just defect immediately. You're just like, wow, I hate this game. Uh, for Bow, on the other hand, now Bow doesn't actually unlock anything, right? But what it does do is it frees up your accessory slot. So in the past, you had to build Sultan's Quiver or Quiver Infinity to finish your uh, your build, right? You can stick a mounted archer, but archer's quiver, but it also felt pretty bad. And while well, these were good, right? These were incredibly hard to make. Gold you wanted to be using for your helmet. And Mithril, well, if you're using it for your accessory, you also feel really bad, although this is a pretty good quiver. But you lose access to all these really good accessories, right? You lose access to Kundala, for example. You lose access to Schrodinger's Box. You lose access to Veritas, Moonlight Pendants, Dice of Destiny, even, Uchiwa. So you end up just stabbing yourself, not taking arrow supply in that situation. So that's why you always go ammo supply and arrow supply. Uh, also, I wanted to talk about why I always take supplies. So this is a big controversy topic, right? You know, pay to win versus free to play. I get it, right? You guys don't want to spend the one gem for your supplies. But the reality is, is that gems are actually really easy to get. I... 
if you join Team Black Survival, you can actually get gems very easily just by streaming or... Well, it's only by streaming. You can't do it for YouTube content. So if you report your streams, you can actually easily get, like, 14,000 gems after, like, streaming the game for, like, what? A month? And then you can always use those gems for, you know, your ranked games. Gems are basically free if you just record every single time you play the game. You do have to talk, unfortunately, but you'll get better at it as time goes on. And as long as the mod see that you're making an active attempt to talk, they're not going to give you trouble for it, right? So, in general, these are just free stuff at the start game, always take them. I kind of wish they would just remove this from the game, but that's just how it is. Plus, the supplies can potentially just win you the game straight up. It happens. Anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about with all the like minor decisions I make in game, why I do these things. Uh, I hope this helps you out in some of your games. It might not, but hey, I tried my best, right? Anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video and hopefully Twitch stops giving me problems. Peace.